So why am I building this electric car? I mean, it doesn't really make sense for someone like me because gas prices are pretty low right now. I think I filled up for 320 something the other day. Um, I live in an apartment, so it's difficult to recharge. You've got other electric vehicles on the market, such as the Nissan Leaf in the United States, or the, uh, the Mitsubishi MIEV, or however you're supposed to say that. Uh, you've got some series hybrids, like the Volt. Um, so, you know, you've got these, these mass-produced vehicles that can do what I'm about to do uh, even better. The uh, thing is, though, some of these more expensive vehicles, well, they're more expensive. <laughs> you know, you can spend like $30,000 for something like a LEAF after tax incentives. Uh, the vehicle I'm building is going to be about uh, probably a little under $10,000 when all is said and done, which is still a nice sum of money, but you know, you, you can buy a LEAF, which will go 100 miles on a charge, and uh, it's, it's a subcompact car, so you can fit, you know, I think it's four or five people. Um, and it's, it's very well made, you know, I mean, you get like all the, the gizmos like the screen and the dashboard and things like that. But I'm building a truck. I'm building a truck that can go 50 miles on the charge, which will still be plenty for someone like me. It can haul some stuff in the back, although not too much because it might exceed the gross vehicle weight rating, which I might talk about later. It can still seat four or five people. I've got the uh, extended cab version of the truck that I'm converting, Chevy S10. So it's got like three seats in the front, although the middle one's kind of useless, and uh, two jump seats in the back. So if you need to fit, you know, five people, you could if you really wanted to. And, you know, I'll, I'll still be getting better gas mileage than, you know, all the Prius drivers out there, all the Volt drivers who have to switch over to, uh, to gasoline power after 35 miles. Um, I think I'll be doing pretty well. So, it doesn't make super good financial sense, but it's always something I've really been keen on doing. Uh, like I said, uh, I've been wanting to do this for four years now. And I think my interest kind of started uh, back when I was in 10th uh, grade in high school. So my sophomore year of high school. Uh, before I could even drive. <laughs> um, I had to do a science project. And uh, I really didn't want to do anything. It was supposed to, I mean, you're supposed to do, do something a little bit chemistry related, but you didn't really have to. And I, I don't really care about chemistry, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I like engineering, though. I'm an engineer. So I decided to do something a little bit engineering-ish. I like cars, so I decided to try to improve the efficiency of an internal combustion engine, or at least recapture some of the waste and put it to good use. So like my initial idea, was to get something that would uh, heat a very, or, or some sort of liquid that had a very low boiling point, and you could use that to generate steam and turn a small turbine, maybe even replace an alternator if you could get enough steam to, you know, turn this turbine quickly enough. And, because, uh, you know, the alternator puts a load on the engine, and if you can remove that load, then you get a little bit more efficiency, a little bit more power. Um, more everything. I looked into this idea until I decided that it was uh, a little impractical and not really something that I really wanted to pursue. I thought there were bigger gains to be made in efficiency. You see, the problem is with, the, with an engine, you've got uh, so many things in gasoline that you just don't need. They, they, don't, they aren't burned, you don't need them for combustion, and they're just expelled as exhaust and as heat. Um, so depending on who you talk to, an internal combustion engine is only, you know, 15 to 25 percent efficient. An electric car, as I found out during my research, uh, is between 80, just 80 and, and above efficiency, 80 percent and above. And that's kind of where I wanted to be. So I started, but, but then I found out some of the problems with electric cars. You know, you've got limited range, uh, you've got limited power, uh, they're very heavy, uh, a bit expensive because the technology is still relatively new. So, I wanted to kind of combine the best of both worlds. I wanted an electric engine, basically. I wanted something that worked with a piston because when you, you know, have an explosion that sends a piston downward, it produces a lot of power if you do it right. Um, so I wanted something that 
was piston powered but still used electricity. And so I got into this whole idea of having an electromagnet uh, push a neodymium magnet on top of a piston downward. So you'd have like the electromagnet at the top where the spark plug might be in a regular engine and a piston with a neodymium magnet on top uh, right here and a counterweight at the bottom. So every time the piston would get to the top of the cycle, the uh, electromagnet here would put the same you know, polarity as the neodymium magnet and push it away. And then the counterweight would spin around and push it back up. Um, so I started looking into this, but as it turns out, uh, electromagnets aren't really nearly as strong as an explosion created from gasoline. So while this is what I ended up doing my project on, I still wasn't really satisfied. And I kept looking more and more at these electric cars, and there's a lot of people all over the world who have been converting regular gasoline cars to electric. And um, so over the past four years, I've been doing lots and lots of research. I've been looking at what people have done, uh, where technology stands, what are the biggest limitations. I've become really, really interested in uh, making my own. And uh, the only problem is, you know, I, never, I either was short of one of the two resources you need, which is time and money. But um, I've been working the past two summers, saving uh, all my money as much as I can. And uh, now I've, I'm on winter break from college, so I have 35 days with which to convert an electric vehicle. And uh, I've heard of conversions being done as little as just a couple days. Um, I'm a first timer, so I really don't think that's going to happen. Um, I kind of planned out a schedule to see about what I could expect. And the schedule I laid out shows it being done in, uh, I think, less than 20 days, which I don't think is really going to happen. I think it's going to take uh, more of the time that I've allotted. But, you know, I've got 35 full length days. You know, I don't, I don't have school or work or anything, so I have all the time I need to dedicate to this. And uh, I bought most of the parts already, all the major parts. I actually got a really, really good deal from a guy in Pennsylvania um, who had converted a tractor to electric and then uh, dismantled it when he, he tried to get a patent and was, was beat, uh, beat to the punch. So I got a really good deal, $1,800. I got uh, a 9-inch motor. Uh, it's a... Um, I don't remember who makes it, but the model number is, oh, ADC, Advanced DC. It's uh, an ADC FB1-4001A, which is a pretty common 9-inch motor. There's that and uh, the Warp 9, which is another really common 9-inch uh, motor. Um, I have, for a controller, uh, the Curtis 1231C-8601, which is kind of a starter controller, but it's what you know most first-time converters end up using. It's only 500 amps. You've got some that are 1,000 amps now, which is pretty sweet. Things like the, uh, the Solid N1. Um, those are <laughs> really expensive. Like you're looking at $3,000 for a controller, and I I couldn't do that. I've got a whole bunch of batteries actually. Uh, this guy had uh, 12 12 volt batteries. Um, they're from Crown, I forget the model number, but the problem is they've been sitting in a, a shed for quite some time, uh, and it's, you know, obviously not temperature controlled. So I decided to just, you know, go out and get new batteries. They look pretty cruddy, the ones I have. So I bought um, 24 6-volt batteries from Trojan. I've heard really great things about Trojan. Uh, some people swear by them, they won't buy anything else. So the batteries I got are, oh, let me think, they're T105s, which is kind of their, their lowest tier 6-volt battery. They make T105s, T125s, and T145s, and as you increase the number, you also increase in amp hour rating, which means you go further on charge. Um, but they're just kind of out of my budget. I already spent, shipped, um, a little over $3,200 for these batteries, and uh, I felt that was uh, <laughs> a pretty significant sum, so couldn't really go higher than that. And I can still expect, um, you know, 45 to 50 miles, depending on how I drive and the speeds I'm driving at. 
I'd say that's kind of at a, an average of 45 miles an hour or so. I can get that sort of range. Um, that's plenty because I, the longest trips that I really make, I go from my house, which is in uh, uh, Fairfax, Virginia. I go to um, Tyson's Mall, which is a little bit further north in McLean, Virginia, which is about 10 miles. Then I might drive around in Tyson's somewhat and then drive back, which is another 10 miles. So 50 miles should be plenty of range, so I don't get range anxiety or anything like that. So I figure that's, that's a good number. Oh, another thing that came in my package uh, for 1800 bucks, I got this uh, uh, charger, a Zivin NG3, which is uh, a pretty good charger. Um, I've heard a lot of great things about Zivin. The guy who I bought it from sort of modified it a little bit, which I'm a little bit concerned about. He uh, basically took the 120 volt plug that was built to the end of it, chopped it off, and spliced in a plug that will work in a 220 volt outlet. And the charger can take 220 volts. Um, but I just, you know, I don't know how he was in terms of uh, his electrical skills or anything like that. I don't know much about it. Um, it's just been sitting in the garage for, oh, since the summer, I guess. And, uh, you know, here it is, my first day of winter break. So that, that's mostly what I got in the package. I got a few other little bits and pieces, like uh, contactors and a voltmeter and an amp meter, which you need for instrumentation, a shunt. Um, like I said, just a few other little bits and pieces that uh, will save me some money. You know, altogether, for 1800 bucks, this really wasn't bad at all. Um, I've looked at packages, uh, or no, I've looked at um, like just individual parts. The motor alone um, will run you like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars, and then the controller probably a little over a thousand. Uh, the charger probably around six hundred. So and plus I got all these batteries thrown in, which are just kind of a, a bonus, really, um, since I can, I could have probably used them for cores. But the thing is, I bought the batteries from a distributor in Florida, and uh, that's a whole other story. But um, I didn't want to be driving down to Florida just to give them some cores. It just the, the cost didn't work out. Um, but you know, maybe I can sell them up here. Who knows? Like you know, twenty bucks a battery or something. And uh, in addition to all that, I also bought a vehicle. I bought a uh, Chevy S10. Um, and actually, a little secret: this was not the first vehicle I bought for this purpose. Uh, the first vehicle I, vo I bought was actually a 1988 Porsche 924 S. And uh, a lot of people actually convert Porsches. They're, they're a pretty common conversion vehicle. And uh, you know, this is because they, they do relatively well aerodynamically. They have low weight. And uh, surprisingly enough, they're, they're pretty cheap. <laughs> actually, that, that's kind of an understatement. Um, I picked my, my Porsche up. It was uh, non-running. Um, it had a bad clutch and the engine wouldn't turn over. But I picked up the whole car for 300 bucks, which... Um, you know, if you're in the UK right now, you're like, oh, 300 pounds? Well, that's nothing. Uh, in the United States, it's, it's kind of hard to get cars that cheap. Um, it's, it's really hard to get cars that cheap. That's like scrap prices right there. The thing is, you know, I, I picked it up in, in the dark. I bought it at nighttime, and that was kind of a mistake. It was a black car, nighttime, in, in a rainstorm, non nonetheless. <laughs> I, I just said, sure, I'll take it. 300 bucks, you know, can't go wrong. And uh, looking at it the next day, I realized you can go wrong. You know, just, just everywhere you look, there was just, just something a little bit wrong. Like, you know, you look at the bumper and it's a little crooked. Uh, look in the inside, there's a couple pieces that are like, like a couple of trim pieces just pulled out, just randomly laying there. Um, I looked underneath, the, uh, the radiator fan was just sort of hanging there. And I mean, you know, obviously the radiator fan isn't really a big deal um, since it's coming out anyway, but it's just, just you don't know what this, this owner did to it to make it not run because actually when I when I bought it she said it was running but I never I couldn't try it out because there was no battery I just I just didn't care I was just excited about the prospect of getting a $300 Porsche I just didn't care and I should have I actually I've been doing some more reading online since then and uh, the topic is uh, what do you most regret about doing you know your previous EV conversions what would you change if you did it all over again and one of the biggest things uh, was people saying, I really wish I bought a vehicle that was in running condition and I'd driven around a bit before I actually converted it. And just to, to be aware of any problems or anything that, that might be an issue. 
So that's what I did. I paid $1,600 for a 1997 Chevrolet S10. Yeah, it's a pretty big change from a Porsche. <laughs> it's, um, you know, Porsche is a pretty, cop uh, pretty popular vehicle, like I said. Uh, the S10 is probably the most popular vehicle, and I have no hard data to base that on, just kind of, you know, what I've seen. A lot of people like to convert Porsches, or, or S10s, sorry. And uh, the reason for this is they're relatively light. They're about 3,000 pounds, which is more than a Porsche by maybe 500 pounds or so. And they don't do very well aerodynamically compared to the Porsche, but they can handle a lot of weight, so you can put a lot of batteries in them. And uh, you can actually put some batteries underneath the bed if you want to, which is what I'm going to be doing. So I can actually uh, keep the use of my bed for some lighter stuff if I, if I really want to. And like I said, you know, a lot of people have done this before, so if I get stuck anywhere, I have people I can turn to for advice. And another really nice advantage, um, one of the more custom pieces that you're going to need is an adapter plate and a coupler. And what, what these two pieces do is they connect the motor to the transmission. You know, the, the engine connects the transmission with the flywheel, and you don't have that sort of a thing with a, uh, with a motor. You, know, you don't need a flywheel, you don't even need a clutch if you don't want to. There's actually a lot of theories about that. Uh, that's a topic for another video, in terms of whether you, you should have a clutch or whether you shouldn't. I'm going with the clutch, just, just putting that out there. But the nice thing is, I can actually just call somebody up and say, hey, I need a, an adapter kit for a Chevy S10. And they say, oh yeah, sure, here you go. It's, uh, I think I paid 875 shipped, sounds about right, for both the adapter plate and the coupler. And, uh, you know, normally you'd have to take it to a machinist and have them make a custom job after you take some really precise measurements. Whereas, you know, I can just get something off the shelf, which saves me a lot of time because, you know, as I said, time will be an issue with this build. I don't know if it really saves me a lot of money because $875 is kind of a lot um, for what is just a piece of metal and a uh, piece of metal to connect the, uh, the shaft of the motor to the, uh, the shaft of the transmission. But, um... I think the time savings will be worth it, and uh, certainly the effort involved with uh, measuring the motor and everything, or, you know, you have to measure both the motor and the engine, I think. You may just need to measure the engine. Um, I'm not entirely sure because I didn't really have to look into that. So all this to say, there is kind of a lot that goes into uh, building an electric vehicle. A lot of costs, a lot of time, um, but I'm finally at a time in my life where I am able to uh, to go ahead with the project and I'm really looking forward to it. So this has been kind of a secondary introduction video, uh, a lot longer, give you some background about uh, why I got into this in the first place, uh, some of the costs involved, um, and next time you'll hopefully be seeing me pulling out the engine, so stay tuned for that. Coming up on Electruck TV I pushed the truck out of a garage. Scott gets a package. Heavy! And the neighbors help us remove the bed. So stay tuned to Electruck TV.